What is up? Colin here, the Wild CEO, back for another Shut Up, No One Cares, Get Back to Work podcast. I'm obsessed with being the best version I can. I want to help you do the same. This is a daily show, around 10 minutes, a little dose of first principles, evergreen content to help you live a better life. Something that ideally is going to stick in your head that you'll be thinking about that will help improve you. Maybe you'll make better decisions. Maybe you'll pull on threads that need to be pulled on. Whatever. My goal here is to help you be a better human, and then you're going to pass that along because you're going to get better results in your life. You're going to be happier. You're going to help other people do the same. It's going to be a pay it forward effect with you leading by example. Okay, so what's the big idea today? Every show's got a big idea, and then we'll get to the daily six where we have some tips for cooking, mindset, a quote of the day, and then even my thoughts on something financial related. Today's big idea is focus. I know it's focus. It's just one of those things. Like I like to talk about a lot. It's a big idea. It's the first principle. And today in our social media connected digital screen world and the world, the future world that we're moving into, what we spend our attention on is going to be what our lives become. And it's happening even to this day. You load your head up with garbage. You're going to get garbage in your life. You load your head up with negativity. You surround yourself with negative people. You perpetuate negativity by gossiping and complaining and doing things like that. And your life is going to be basically a shit show. And it's amazing that people are so unaware of this. It's that quote reminds me of the fish where the fish is like, oh, the water's nice today. And then one of the other fish is like, what's water? They have no idea that they're in water. So many people live these lives of distraction and envy and jealousy and stress and just constant discontentment. And they don't even know or consider why that's the case or maybe how to change it. Like, how do they get out of the, the muck? How do they get out of the water? It's like quicksand. People are slowly sinking into disrepair and in, not even talking about health, just mental health, even physical health, same thing. Every year they get a little bit sicker, a little bit fatter, a little bit closer to an early grave. And that's a damn shame. And so today's topic is about focus. This applies to everything though. It's a little bit more geared towards work and how you think about your work routine, your productivity, but it can be taken back from a broad view as a first principle what you spend your energy on, what you focus on determines what you get in life. So productivity and focus and eliminating distraction and simplifying and all these ideas that you see books written about and you hear people talking about a podcast and whatever, they are some of the most important things in life. At the end of the day, your life is a series of thoughts and experiences. How you spend your time thinking about things and then doing things or not doing things is going to determine the life you have. And if you're listening to this, you want a better life. You wouldn't have clicked on this video or podcast or anything. If you were listening to this right now, you want to be a better human and you want to live a better life. That's safe to say. You're somewhat, even remotely, even if it's only a little bit, interested in personal development and getting more out of life. And that's great. I applaud you for that. You shouldn't have shame around that. I want to be the best version I can be. I want to then pass that along to other people. I think humanity itself can evolve out of a lot of the muck and a lot of the bad ideas and a lot of the things that are the byproduct of civilization and then going back into our ancestral past and tribalism and racism and all the things that kept our species the top of the food chain. Well, today we need to evolve out of them. And so that's a lot of what I do with the work over the ancestral mind is trying to understand where we came from so that we can understand how we can live best today. And then we can use our superior intelligence and the worldwide amazing sharing of information that we have, this this connected world that we've built to be better people and build a better world. So this article is about focus and productivity. And I'm gonna try to summarize the best I can because it's actually kind of long. It, I was writing like a fury earlier because the weather was nice, the breeze was blowing. It was amazing, good feeling. Perfect way to start the day and be productive. So six pages a day, every day. It's about a thousand words. This is from an exchange that Stephen King had with, I think his name is G.B. Wise, the guy who wrote Game of Thrones. They were talking about something, and it was, I guess it was being interviewed. Maybe it was an, even a, a, like a casual conversation or an interview of some sort. But he was basically like, how do you get so much writing done? Game of Thrones author was asking Stephen King. He said something to the effect like, I'll spend three months and get a few chapters done, and I feel accomplished. And you'll have written three books by then. And he's just like dumbfounded by it. And so Stephen King kind of did the math a little bit, and then he brought it down to the simple daily practice. I try to get six pages a day every day, no matter what, without fail. Six pages a day. It's about a thousand words. Now this idea, six pages, a thousand words, I'm going to break down real quick. And I go more in depth in this article about how every single productivity law for getting things done, which again, these can be, these can be used for your personal life. These concepts are universal. They're first principles. And though we're using them for work and productivity, you can actually use them in all areas of your life. So keep that in mind. I'm going to break down the six pages a day, 1000, this 1000 words, and I'm going to show you how it signifies and shows and is utilizing all the primary principles of focus and intention, getting things done, etc. The principles we're going to talk about are going to be deep work, time blocking, first principles, number one thing, obviously focus is in there, but that's all kind of, oh, 
So 80-20, first of all, this law says that 80% of your results come from 20% of your input or effort. 80% of the money in the planet is owned by the 20%. It's a power law. And when, when King does his daily writing, he's focusing on his 20%. Without fail, the secret to King's success is the fact that he writes every day. Writing for him is his 20%. It probably generates like closer to 95% of his results. Like he just has to focus on writing and then he has his editors and his team and all these things on the back end so that the most important thing for him on a daily basis is writing. So by making sure he gets six pages a day, a thousand words, he's focusing on his 20%. The number one thing, same thing, very close to 80-20. By focusing on writing, and probably doing it somewhat earlier, earlier in the day so that the rest of the day is basically gravy, he knocks out his big one task for the day every single day. And the more he does it every single day, the more consistent he stays, and the more he builds that consistency muscle. That's huge. Deep work. I guarantee you when he's writing, his phone's off, he's not on the internet, he's not trying to do research, and he's not trying to edit and do all these things. He's just straight writing. A deep work routine is a routine that's protected. Nobody can get to you. There's no distractions, not people around. There's not people calling you or texting you. You're not checking notifications. You're not on Reddit or anything like that. You're just writing or you're just recording. Like right now, nobody can get in hold of me. Nobody's going to interrupt this. This is part of my deep work. This is my recording time in the studio every single day without fail. Your deep work is going to be what it is, but generally it's going to be a place where people can't bother you. Time blocking. You use time blocking to schedule your deep work. So what you do is you put on your calendar or you just plan it out each day or maybe ideally you have the same routine every single day. Like for me, when I get home, I used to go make food and then I would get tired and I would hang out with the family and the other things would come up. Now, right when I get home, I figured this out probably two weeks ago, I record, I get this daily podcast done and then I go and do those things and it's night and day. I don't have that nagging like, oh, I got to still record. It's gone. I've done it. I've knocked it out. I focused. I got my 80-20. I got my big one thing for the day done and then I, it's just momentum. It's just amazing and when you really build your routines around this and you protect your routines and you block things off your calendar and your schedule, that's how you get stuff done. At the end of the day, this is how you get stuff done. First principles. First principles is basically the things that aren't going to change. What are those? Let's focus on those. We know that one plus one equals two. A mathematician could not build complex formulas if one plus one no longer equal two, right? It's a foundational first principle that other things are built on top of. Success, what is the first principle that we know for sure? Well, we know that if I'm consistent, I will probably be successful with what I'm doing. That's the first principle. Daily, six pages, a thousand words without fail, right? Or daily, two hour deep work routine, or daily record this video every single day in the studio right when I get home, these are all first principles because they're also connected to other first principles. When I get my recording done, I feel better. When I get my recording done, it's easier to get other things done. I have momentum. This is a first principle. If I put off recording, if I try to go eat first and then I come down here with the belly full of food, it's just not as good and I'm less likely to do it and I might skip days. That's a first principle. So as you can see here, and I can go on and on about this, but we're already pretty much at 10 minutes. Six pages a day, or for you, recording once a day, or one hour just to build your, work on your play, work on your book, work on your spreadsheet, your business plan, whatever those high value 80-20 tasks are, the things that really matter, the number one thing, protect that with a deep work routine that's blocked, that's on your schedule that nobody can interrupt, and this is the secret to getting things done. And the reason that I no longer think that everybody can be an entrepreneur Although I do believe everybody can have a side hustle and do things like that. I, I do believe that, but I don't think everybody can be an entrepreneur because this type of routine and thinking this way and, and, and having the, the discipline and doing these things, you have to become a different person to do this type of stuff at the scale that's needed to, I would say, be an entrepreneur. I know that might sound a little bit deflating, but but for a side hustle, while being an entrepreneur, just the life-changing perspective and, and, and the years of effort you have to put in, that's not going to be for everybody, but everybody could have a side hustle. And whether you have a side hustle or you want to build a freelance business or you want to just be better at your job, these principles are fundamental. These are first principles. They're not going to change. And the more you can actually focus on them and respect these laws, the better results you're going to get in everything. And you could apply these to your relationships. You could apply these to like time with kids, scheduling life, scheduling things that don't matter, you know, being willing to let some things go by the wayside so you can focus on the things that matter. This stuff can be used for life, right? So really internalizing these ideas, practicing them, and then getting better and being a systems engineer so that you can utilize them on a regular basis, complete game changer. I mean, this is life-changing stuff, really. So daily six now, because we're going a little bit over and I'm gonna let you go. All right, this one's from Alexander Graham Bell, which, who may or may not have invented the, the telephone. 
Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work at hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. It's really powerful. Here's another one real quick. I focus on one thing and one thing only. That's trying to win as many championships as I can. Kobe Bryant. And that's why he was one of the greatest. You didn't see Kobe out giving interviews and doing movies and doing all these things. He was focused on being the best he could be. And that's why he was one of the best. Daily tip or recommendation. Question more. Use the Socratic method. Make less statements. This is something that will take years to develop. You're not going to develop this overnight, especially if you're a talker and you like to make statements. But if you want better results with people, if you want to get more persuasion out of people and, and things to be more the way you want or to get certain outcomes to come to fruition, you're going to have to use questions because talking at people, telling people things, humans naturally vie away from that. They don't like being told what to do. It's just, it's just one of those things. There's a resistance there. And if you want people to think you're a better listener, use more questions and then shut up and listen. Daily health tip. If you aren't hungry, don't eat. This fallacy that you eat small meals a day or snacks are going to burn metab metabolism is a joke. When you eat food, your body releases hormones, primarily insulin, which is designed to store food for later. Your body is designed to turn calories into fat. This is survival. Nobody talks about this. And I can't believe this myth became a thing. Your body is designed, I'm going to repeat again, your body is designed to take food calories in that food and convert it into a body fat. Why? Because that's how you survive when you're in the wild. You don't have food on demand. You can't walk around with squeezy packs of carbs or, or bars in your pocket. Your food, you found it, you ate it, and then you try to save as much of it as possible as fat so that for the times you couldn't find food or it took longer to find food, well, you wouldn't die. This is just the basics of human biology. This is irrefutable. Don't snack. Snacking is the bane of weight loss. It's the bane of long-term health. It's not good for your hormones. It's, it's, it's bad. It's bad all around. Ugh, I could go on about that one, of course. Daily cooking tip. Use more salt than you think is correct. Be willing to oversalt your food and even ruining some dishes until you learn how to do it. The grain of salt you use matters because when you're pinching it or seasoning it or sprinkling or whatever, some salts that are finer will be easier to overdo and some salts that are thicker you might underdo or, or vice versa. So figuring out a salt that you can use every time, especially when you're finishing salt and, and then throughout the cooking process and then using that salt consistently enough to find out pretty much how much you need and, and how much you should be using, paramount. Most of people's problem with their food not tasting great is they don't use enough salt. I mean, literally just salt. If people use more salt, if, mo if people cooking at home use 50% more salt, Overnight, their meals would taste better. I mean, it's just insane. We're so afraid of salt. And I know why it is because a lot of the fake news around salt being bad for you and all that like really bad re research that was done. If you're using quality sea salt or rock salt, you're fine. It, 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 it doesn't matter. Like just use it. Cook at home. Don't get the fake stuff and, and the processed food and you're fine. All right. Daily thoughts about money. Then I'm going to let you go. So the thing about money is until you are self-aware and you know who you are, and what you want out of life until you really have self-analyzed all these variables, you're never going to be good with money. You might pursue money and be good at making it, but then you're not going to be good at keeping it. You're not going to be good at spending it. You're not going to be good at having a healthy relationship to it. You're going to become obsessed with it. The most important financial tip that nobody talks about is being self-aware and truly, truly working on yourself and trying to build a life that represents the understanding and the agreement you have with yourself. Money for most people is a means to try to find fulfillment or fill some gaping hole in their life, some void. And all that does is lead them to being in debt, depressed, and likely overweight and into an early grave. And that is fundamentally the power of self-awareness. It can make you richer. It can make you, make you more effective. It can make you happier. It can make your relationships better. It literally is the secret to a better life. Self-aware, be honest with yourself about your strengths and your weaknesses. Double down on your strengths. Work on your weaknesses. Be willing to fail. Be willing to not be perfect. And be constantly vigilant about, about knowing yourself. You have to know yourself. And that's more of a life tip. But when you figure these things out, your money, mistakes, and the bad habits, they will, they will recede. I promise you that. The more you understand who you are and the more you can detach your external validation and the need to pre impress people and have fancy things and all that, like all that designer scams, which is basically propping up the credit card industry, like all that crap that you don't actually need and the food you shouldn't be eating, et cetera. Self-awareness is the key.
That's it for today's show. If you enjoyed this, share it with a friend, like, subscribe, drop a comment wherever you're finding this. If it's on iTunes, you leave a review, whatever. Anything to help support the show so that we can help more humans become better humans is the key. I'm Colin Stuckert, and I'm going to see you in the next one.